Hi, my name is Jeremy, and on this channel I talk about light and color. Today I'm going to talk about the art of unseeing. And when I say that, I don't mean the kind of unseeing like when you do a Google image search about something medical and realize just how bad of an idea that was and wish you had never looked in the first place. If I could just figure out that skill, that would be truly amazing and I could live a more carefree life. <clears throat> no, what I'm talking about is the ability to unsee things that we think we know about the universe and about art. Since childhood, we've learned to oversimplify the world in our minds. Before kindergarten, we learn about colors and are taught that the sky is blue, grass is green, clouds are white, and that red dress you're wearing is, well, red. We learn shapes like circles, squares, triangles. So when we begin to draw, we intuitively use those as tools for creating. What we draw might look something like this, with simple circles for heads and lines for arms. We need to simplify so we don't get overburdened with the amount of data we're taking in from the world around us. The world we see is so vastly complex that we leave most of the processing to our subconscious minds, and our conscious minds try to keep things as simple as possible. As we progress in observing the world and increasing our hand-eye coordination, our art might evolve from stick figures to something more like this. Our understanding allows us to tell a deeper story about the world we see. Faces have more than just circles. They have noses and lips and ears and eyes have pupils. And people have different shapes hair. So we'd start to draw in those details. We might continue to refine this craft and our art might progress from there and start to look something more like this with far more accurate proportions. We might even start to add some color based off of what we were taught about the world. What color is skin or hair or that scarf? Along the way, we observe more and more about our world being able to see like an artist. But sometimes there are barriers in our old ways of thinking that might actually hinder our, our ability to progress. Most people learn to draw using lines. In fact, a lot of art in animation uses simple lines to convey shapes. It's a beautiful simplification and it works quite well, but the world we see doesn't have so many lines. There's light and shadow. When artists learn this, they might start shading their work and get results more like this. But they have to let go of the old process of drawing lines and learn new methods for creating. We must unsee the world of lines in order to see a world of light and color, of light and dark, of value, of shading. Many artists really want to create art that shows light more accurately and really struggle to take their art from this to something like this. The leap to accurate color and light requires a new way of thinking and it's a very big leap. That's why so many artists come to me and struggle with being able to do light and color. It takes a lot of work to master. Light is a really complex thing. We have to learn to unsee shapes and objects in the world and learn to see what's truly there, light. Our simple assumptions served us at the beginning, but in order to master the art of color and light, we have to let those go. When I look at a photo like this, I might make an assumption that leaves are green and that wood of a tree is brown, but what we're actually seeing is not the wood or the tree. It's light bouncing off of those things, which can be really any color at all. Look at how much the colors change in the same location simply by the light at different times of day and year. We have to stop seeing those as objects and start seeing light. So, Again, my first tip in unseeing is learning to unsee objects. Throw out all thinking of objects all together and learn to observe colors. What color is here? Just paint that. Don't paint trees or leaves or sky. Paint the light you see reflecting off of those objects. When painting a face, learn to unsee details like eyes, ears, nose, mouth, lips. What is the general color of the light that comes in and wraps around a face? Paint that first. This is what makes this so difficult, is that we progressed in the past to go from circles and then seeing details. Now we have to unsee those details temporarily in order to be able to see the light and that'll take our paintings to the next level. This is why this step of learning is so difficult. It requires us to rewind our brains back to the very beginning and see the world fresh again. Throw out all assumptions, but this time, when you approach this, you're gonna have hand-eye coordination and years of experiences of observing the world around you. There's a handy trick in Photoshop to be able to unsee details. You can take a reference image, add an effect, noise, median filter, and then 
crank it way up. And this will reduce your image down to blobs of color without losing the color accuracy. This helps you see easier. It's a nice trick. Um, but eventually you want to learn to be able to do this in your own head. So when you see an image, you can do this automatically and unsee the details and just focus in on the color and light. In my former videos, I talk about starting with color studies. So the more you do these, the more practice you have with seeing colors in action. But after a while, I hope you start to observe some more themes. Just like you have to learn to unsee objects, we also need to learn to break light into smaller pieces and see each piece individually. Just like we simplified the world down to stick figures as a child, we can simplify light into easier components too. So today I'm going to talk about six simple components of light. I'm just going to scratch the surface here um, as these are big components and I'm going to talk in future videos about each of these, but I want you to first think about taking those assumptions of art when you were a child, throwing those out and building a new base. So you go from lines and then you go to shading. Now we're going to go to light. You have to unsee those lines and those shadings. You're going to have to unsee objects. And then you can even take light and break it into smaller components. So let me touch on these. Number one, diffuse light. This is light bouncing off of most surfaces. It's what's a most common form of light that we see. And it's where I start each painting. I unsee everything else and I focus just in on the diffused light. This is the blobs of color stage. Almost all of my paintings start this way with just seeing big swaths of colored light. Atmosphere. This is number two. This is where light is scattering through the air and it's one of the most powerful tools for creative illustration. Often atmosphere is more present than local colors of an object. So when I say that I mean Atmosphere can change the colors. It can turn a green leaf into something kind of blue over distance. It can, it can alter colors, browns and warms and reds, and it changes them over distance. So this is a powerful tool. Pay attention to that. That's the light bouncing off of the atmosphere that will change objects. You know, it changes the sky, all kinds of crazy colors. I definitely want to make an entire video about this one as it's really a potent tool for adding depth to our art. The third area of light that we should break into pieces is primary reflections. <clears throat> These are often called highlights and it behaves slightly different from diffuse light as it changes based on the angle from the observer to the object. These are the reflections of only the brightest light source as seen on most surfaces. Here are some examples of highlights like right here and right here. These are primary reflections, sometimes called specular hits or specular highlights. I observe these early on when I'm doing a color study or a painting, but I often save them for later because I want to paint that base diffuse layer, then get the atmosphere, then add these primary reflections. Then I look for subsurface. You'll hear me say subsurface. And this is when light bounces inside of an object, through an object. It's make, it makes light glow in interesting ways. Like in this image of an orange, this is light scattering through the inside of the orange and bouncing through and it kind of adds this soft scattering of light <clears throat> it happens all over the place in the world and it's important to understand it. So we'll talk more about this, but observing details like this, I like to paint in subsurface next along with the diffuse kind of color. It's a beautiful tool that many artists often exaggerate, which allows us to add rich color, uh, you know, into uh, otherwise simplified colored scenes. And then the, the fifth, secondary reflections. Most materials have rough surfaces that blur out the bright reflections into oblivion, but on very smooth surfaces like this plant pot, you can see these secondary reflections reflecting the room itself. So there's the highlights, the brightest points, like when you see the spot of sun reflecting off of something. And then there's those secondary reflections. And I like to save these till later too when painting. I get the diffuse color down, I get the subsurface of the leaves, you know, I add the little highlights, you know, and then I add in these secondary highlights and save these for later. And then the last one is lens effects. This is stuff that doesn't happen in the real world. It happens inside of our eyeballs or inside of the camera itself. These are things that um, when the light bounces off of the lens itself, things like bloom and flares, um, I almost always add to, you know, wait till the end to add these into my paintings. Um, I must observe them early on though, because I have to unsee them temporarily set them aside and know that I'm going to add them in the end, but not until almost everything is in place. So I've uploaded several speed paint videos in between the last couple of videos. If you go back, you can actually see these principles playing out in the way I paint. I observe certain objects and then I unsee certain things and start very simple. 
So here's an example of a color study from this photo. I, I start by unseeing the girl and the trees and the bricks and the details and I, I unsee those temporarily and simplify in my mind what is the light that I'm seeing. And only after I've accurately achieved observing the desired colors do I go back and start to paint details like the bricks or the girl at the center of the photo. I unsee those big details in order to get into the little things and start with light in layers. So to sum up, first learn to see the world as light rather than a bunch of objects. Unsee details and add them later. I highly encourage uh, practice with color studies. Then try painting with lights split into layers. Diffuse, atmosphere, primary reflections, subsurface, secondary reflections, and then lens effects. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. I really do read them. And uh, I will do more videos to talk about each of these in more detail. Thanks for watching. Keep creating.